Okay, here's the um, homework for test review, page 79, 1 through 11. Number one, we're given different graphs here. Um, okay, so number one, we first have to find the domain, the range, the x-intercept, and the y-intercept. Okay, domain are your x numbers. So if you look at these here, our x is, okay, like right here at the vertex is x is 2. But here, this point would have an x of 3, this point here would have an x of 4, this would be an x of 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and it'll keep going, going, going. Same thing on the other side here. A negative 1, 0, sorry, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, etc. is going to keep going, going. So our domain is going to be all real numbers. Okay, our range are our y values. Notice our y is there at 2. I don't have any y's that are lower than 2, though, so it starts at 2. And it's going to keep going and going and going and going up through infinity. So from 2 to infinity, okay, and it includes the 2. So I'm going to have a, print, a bracket there. The x-intercept, it never crosses my x-intercept, so there is none. The y-intercept, intercepts the y at 3. Okay. Part B. Okay, we got a different graph here. It's finding the same things, though. Our domain, once again, keeps going, going, going this way, and keeps going, going, going this way, so it's going to be all real numbers. Our range, okay, we have a y of 0 here. I don't have any other y's that are greater than that. I do have y's that are less than that, though, and it's going to keep going to negative infinity. So our y of 0 to negative infinity, and it includes the 0. Our x-intercept is right here at 3, 0. And the y-intercept right here at 0, negative 3. Okay, part C, I'll put it over here actually. Okay, part C, our domain. Okay, so we know that the x is a negative 4 right here. And then negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, and it's going to keep going this way. But it's not going to keep going this direction. So from negative 4 through infinity. And it's including the negative 4. Our range. Okay, notice a y here is a 0, and it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's going to keep going up, but it never goes down. It stops there at 0. So from 0 to infinity, and it also includes the 0. X-intercept. Okay, it intercepts our x-axis right there at negative 4, 0. And the y-intercept is at 0, 2. Okay, so that's number 1. Number 2. Okay, looking at this graph here, where is the f of x equal to the g of x? At what x value? So right here is where this one's equal to this one, and the x is at negative 4. So part a at x equals negative 4. Part b, where is our f of x less than the g of x? So here's my f of x, there's my g of x. So here the f is greater, so it's above. Here the x is f of x is less than it's below. So from negative infinity to negative 4. Okay, and it's not or equal to, so it's this instead of the bracket. C, where is f of x greater than or equal to? Okay, so our f of x here is greater than the g of x there. These out outputs are greater. So from negative 4 through negative equal to, so I'm going to have a bracket there. And D, um, another way to think about this um, is we could add that over to the other side. So where is our y2 equal to adding that over equal to the y1? Once again, it's equal to at that negative 4. Okay. Number 3, um, same sort of idea here, but one equation. Okay, this is a point 5.5. Point five point five. So part A is at x is less than 0. So my output is less than 0 here. So that means that x's that are from negative infinity all the way up through negative um, positive 5.5. So all this area down here. So from negative infinity to 5.5. Part C, 
uh, where is it going to be greater than zero? So the outputs here would be greater than zero because at one, two, etc. So 5.5 through infinity. And D, where is it less than or equal to? So it's really the same sort of D as this one right here, except we just have the or equal to part. So from negative infinity to 5.5, including the 5.5 this time. Okay, number four. I'm not sure how I'll get it in like this, I guess. Okay, number four. Um, we have these two functions. Saw them analytically. Okay, where are they equal to each other? So you just set this one equal to this one. Okay, so 3x minus 12 minus 2x plus 10 equals negative 2x minus 2 minus 3. Add your like terms, we had x minus 2 is equal to negative 2x minus 5. I'm going to add that over, I'm going to add that over, and divide, I get negative 1. Okay, you can take that negative 1, plug it in, this side will equal that side. Uh, we're going to graph them too and use result to find the solution where f of x is greater than g of x, okay? Um, basically, when I graph the two things, I'm not sure exactly where it's gonna be, but at negative one, that's where they're gonna be equal to each other, right? Okay? Um, so one at negative one's where they're equal, and one of them's gonna be greater than the other by looking at the graph, sort of like number two we just did above, okay? So f of x is going to be greater than the g of x. Um, this is our f of x function. This would be something like our g of x. I don't know exactly what it looks like, but something. Um, but this area here would be f, where f of x is greater than g of x. So from negative 1 to infinity. You can graph it on Desmos to make sure. Okay, and then part c, where is our f of x less than the g of x? So f of x is less than g of x over here. f of x here is less than this. So for part C, from negative infinity to negative 1. Okay, number 5. Solve it where it's equal to 0. So I'll write it down and then I'll get it in the screen. Okay, so we want to know where that is equal to 0. Multiply it through, negative 4x, negative 2, uh, plus 3x minus 6 equals 0. Add your like terms, negative x minus 8 equals 0. Add your x to the other side, x equals negative 8. Okay, where is our f of x less than or equal to 0 analytically? Um, basically, this line is that x here of negative 8, right? So um, our graph, if you would graph this, would look something like this. So it's going to be less than 0. Yeah, it's going to be less than 0 over here. So from negative 8, infinity, it's going to be less than 0. Part C, oh, it says or equal to. So or equal to, so we need to we need to have that bracket there, okay? Part C, uh, graph in an appropriate window. Explain how the graph supports your answers in part A and B. Basically, um, equal to is right there, and when it's less than, it's this part right here. Okay, number six. Okay, uh, depicts how the average monthly rates for cable television increased from 82 to 2008. Okay, how much did cable TV cost? Use the midpoint formula to approximate the average uh, for 1995. 1995 is in the middle there. So, let's see there, yep. So our midpoint is 1982 plus 2008. Divide by 2, that gives me the year 1995. We're halfway in the middle there for the X. And the Y is we have $8.30 for cable plus $30.53 divided by 2. 
And if you work that out, that comes up to be $19.42. Okay, part B says use the slope of the line and explain its meaning. Okay, to find slope, you take the y minus the y divided by the x minus the x, and that gives you 0.855. Okay, so the meaning of this, what does that mean? It means that um, the the in dollars, the monthly rate in dollars is increasing an average of 85 and a half cents per year. Okay. Number seven. Uh, finding an equation that passes through this point, okay, negative 3, 5, and is it parallel to this line? 